Okay, we're back here live, ending up day one of IBM's Information on Demand, this exclusive coverage from SiliconANGLE and Wikibon and Constellation Research, breaking down the day one analysis. I'm John Furrier, and I'm joined with my co-host here on theCUBE, Dave Vellante, of course, as usual. And for this closing wrap-up segment of day one, we have uh, analyst and founder of Constellation Research, Ray Wang, former analyst, big data guru, big software, uh, heading up uh, the Partner Pavilion, kicking off all the plan around the world. You had your own event this month, past month. Things are going great. Uh, how are you? How are you doing? We're doing great, man. There's a lot of energy in Q3, Q4. We've been watching people look at trying to spend down their budgets. And I think people are just like worried that there's going to be nothing in 2014, <laughs> right? So they're just spending down. We're seeing these big orders. Like tonight, I've got to fly out to New York to close out a deal and help someone else. That's basically, it was a big data deal that's going down. This is how crazy it's going on. And so it's been like this pretty much like for the last four or five weeks. So budget flush. Budget flush. <laughs> budget flush. <laughs> it is budget flush time. What are you seeing for the deals out there? I mean, give us some of the examples of some of the sizes and magnitude. Is it, you know, you know, hurry up and run um, to get get some cash in to secure? What size scopes are you seeing out there? Yeah, I mean, what we're seeing, I mean, it's anything from a quarter million in to like five million dollar deals. Some of our platform, we're seeing at all levels. Um, the one that's really hot, and we were talking about this at the Tableau conference, was the data viz. Right, data viz is still really, really hot. But on the back end, we're seeing data quality pop up. We're seeing the integration piece play a role. Um, we also saw a little bit of content management, but not the traditional content management that's coming in, more about the text mining, text analytics to kind of drive that. I mean, I'm not sure, what are you guys seeing as well? Yeah, so, um, well we're seeing a lot of energy, I've seen a budget flush, we're not involved in the deals like you are, Dave is, but for me, what I'm seeing is, um, IT cloud is being accepted, I'll, you know, this is not talked about publicly, it's kind of a public secret, is Amazon is just destroying the value proposition of many folks out there with the cloud. They're just winning the developers hand over fist, and you know, I'm not sure Pivotal with Cloud Foundry can even catch up, even OpenStack has really got some, some energy around, we're following that, so you got OpenStack, you got Amazon, on the public cloud winning everything, so money's pouring into the enterprise saying, hey, we got to build the infrastructure under the hood, yep. so you can't have the application edge if you don't have the engine. Well, so it's a hundred x price advantage, and that's really yeah. the scary thing. But, but I think Softlayer gives IBM a shot here. Yeah, we were talking about Softlayer. So you you are seeing more. I mean, I've seen eight eight figure deals in big data, right? I yes. mean, it's starting to get up there. So Softlayer, love to get your take on Softlayer. We've been having a debate all day about <laughs> Softlayer. Josh, kind of, what do you, you, what's your take? You're saying it's a host thing. I've been no, sort of no, I'm not positive down on, on it. it. Look at, first of all, yeah. I love to but see. But it's a huge gap. It's 900 million dollars for a block of, 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 of data center hosting. Now, if that's a footprint, they can shave that and kind of give their customers some comfort. I think that's the way I see it. I mean, just, I haven't gone inside the numbers to see where it's going to be, where the synergy is, but like where software virtualization is going and where everyone's going on with virtualization in the data center. Well, I it gives IBM a cloud I, play. I though. just don't see that. We really didn't have one before. I mean, that's I mean, cloud. I mean, cloud that's not necessarily I mean, private cloud. Is it have. cloud? Is there software involved? I think it provides them with an option to actually deliver cloud services um, with a compression ratio and storage and a speed that they need to do to deliver mobile and mobile data analytics. Right? There's things that are there that are required. So it gives them an option to be play in the cloud. Well, I just saw. I mean, in, in the news coverage and the small inspection that we did, I did was I just it didn't reek of software innovation. It's simply a data center, large hosting, big iron. But you agree, they didn't footprint. really have a, a, a there were option no, There were the no options this, for IBM right? before. This was brilliant. I mean, on they're their sunsetting end. their you know, previous offers. All the musical chairs deal? On. Kind of musical chairs, before the music stops, get something? Was that kind of the deal? No, I think Fire it's probably build. more like customers asking for something and they wanted IBM to have it. Yeah, so IBM works. They, it, yeah. It's, a, it's an IRR play for IBM, I and mean, they're going to make money on this deal. It's not a tuck under deal, nine hundred million. No, I know, but they'll make money on it. That's IBM almost always does with it. Well, I'll leave that up to you guys um, <laughs> to, to, to rip on. How was your conference? Oh, thanks. Hey, Constellation Connect Enterprise was awesome. Uh, we were at the Half Moon Bay Ritz. We had a 220 folks that were there, senior level individuals. One of the shocking things for me was the fact that when we polled the audience on day one, two things happened that I would never imagine. First thing is 90% of the folks downloaded our mobile app, which was like awesome, right? So the network was with them, the knowledge is with them when they leave the event and, and all the relationships. The second thing that really shocked me, we knew we had really good ratios, but it was 75% of the audience that was line of business execs and 25% percent IT. It was like we were, we didn't have to preach to the choir. It was amazing. Uh, and the IT folks that were, they were very, very innovative on that end. So it, it was awesome in that way. So a, a, a lot like the mix, the mix here is much more line of business execs. The last week at Hadoop World was, you know, the t-shirt crowd, right? A lot of practitioners, you know, Scoop, Hive, Flume. 
<laughs> hey, we got Spark. stuffed animals everywhere running around. <laughs> uh, but no, this, this event is actually interesting. IBM IOD for me is like, I didn't realize this when I didn't, I looked at the numbers when we were doing the partner event yesterday, and there are 13,000 attendees here. Mm. That actually makes that the biggest big data and analytics conference, bigger than Strata, bigger than a whole bunch of other ones. And so, I mean, this is pretty much the nexus of what's Well, what happening. about open world? <laughs> Well, I don't know if there's 13,000 big data folks that were there, but it, it, it is a big conference. But it is a big conference. So. Yeah. EMC World. EMC World. <laughs> but, but no, that's cloud meets big data. <laughs> hey. Split it between. No, but so IBM's done a fantastic job of, of really transitioning this conference from sort of an eclectic this mix was DB2 of DB2 Informix, right? I mean, right, information like, management. This is super geek fest. And, right? Yeah, and, and now it's like, oh, what, what are the business things? I mean, what are we trying to save around the world? I are mean, they telling the story well, effectively? It's a hard story to tell. You got big data analytics, cloud mobile in the middle, and you got social business, but then you got all this use case. So they have success stories, they have customers that are creating business outcomes. Are they telling the story effectively? Is it not enough speeds and fees? Is it too, the what's your take? The stories are there. Um, we've seen like 122 case studies from the business partner side. We just haven't seen them percolate out, and I think they've got to do a better job evangelizing stories. But what's interesting is like, there's that, remember we talked about this data to decision level? There's that data level that was IBM, right? Here's the database, here's the structure, here's the content management, here's the unstructured stuff. This is where it sits. Then there was that information management level, which that they started to do, which is really about cleaning the data, connecting that data, connecting to upstream and downstream systems, getting into CRM and payroll. And then they got to this level about in insights, which was all the Cogno stuff, right? So they've been building up the stack from data to decision. So they got data to information, information to insight. And then we're getting to this decision-making level, which they haven't made a lot of the assets or acquisitions there, but that's the predictive analytics. That's the cognitive computing. You can see how they're wrapping around there. I mean, there's a lot of vendors to buy. There's a lot of opportunity out there. There's a lot to connect as And well. they've been working on it for a while. But I guess, so I got to ask you, how are they doing? What's your report card from last year to this year? Better? Better storytelling? Better messaging? Um, I think the stories are getting better, but we're seeing them in more deals now, right? Before we'd see a lot more, it'd be SAP, traditional SAP, Oracle, you know, kind of competes, um, and a little bit of IBM Cognos. Now we're seeing them in a lot of end-to-end -end deals. And what we're talking about is it's not like IT deals. These are line of business folks that say, look, I really need to change my shopping experience. What do you guys have? Um, we see other things like, you know, the fraud examples that Indy was talking about. Those are hilarious. <laughs> I mean, those are real. Like, yeah. We see them in every place, right? I mean, even with Obamacare, right? There's going to be massive amounts of fraud. There's going to be places that people are going to want to go in and figure out how to connect or correct those kind of things. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so we're seeing the use cases emerge. Yeah, and, and in particular, I mean, last week, in, in uh, Hadoop world, it was financial services. You're talking risk, you're talking marketing, you're talking fraud. Prediction kind of the, too, the, the, and forecasting. The, yep, the, the big three, and then underneath that is predict predictive analytics. So, you know, th that's all sort of interesting. What's your take on, um, on Amazon these days? You know, they are crushing it on so many different it's levels. It's unbelievable, right? Uh, on Four the billion cloud. this year, maybe? <laughs> it's it's AWS. the economics. When you build a whole company, which is basically on the premise of, hey, let's get people to offset our cost structure from November 15th to January 1st, I mean, it's pretty amazing what you can do. It's like everyone's covering for it. And even more funny, is like they're doing it in the physical world with distribution centers. I don't know if we talked about this before, but what's really interesting is they've got last mile delivery. UPS, FedEx, DHL can't, can't, can't handle their capacity. So now the ability from digital to physical goods, they've got that. And Bezos goes out and buys the post. So he can make the post, for example, a national paper overnight again. He can do home delivery, things that they couldn't do before. They can take digital ads, bring that back in. And so basically what they're doing on the cloud side, they're also doing on the physical distribution side. It's amazing, isn't it? They're almost, they're, they're pushing towards Sunday delivery, right? The U.S. Postal Service going to five-day delivery is sort of the different directions. Amazon. I mean, Amazon's going to be the Postal Service by the time they're done, <laughs> and we're all going to subsidize it. So... <laughs> So I got to get your take on the, uh, the uh, Oracle early statement Larry Ellison said, um, we're the iPhone for the data center. That's his metaphor, a couple, couple uh, Oracle open worlds ago. Um, now you got OpenStack, um, and though we kind of laughed at that, but, but Amazon is like the iPhone. I mean, it's disruptive, uh, it's new, it's emerging, like Apple when it was re coming out of the ashes with Steve Jobs. Oracle, I think, trying to shoehorn in on the I iPhone positioning, but if OpenStack, if everyone's open, and you got Amazon here, there is a plausible strategy scenario that says, hey, these guys can continue to, to put the naysayers at, at the, on the side of the road as they march forward to the enterprise and be the iPhone. They've turned the data center into an API. So, yes. so we got the data, they're locking, right? So there's some locking, Apple has locking. 
So is that, lock in. what's your take on that scenario? You think it's, <laughs> you know, in the open <laughs> ecosystem world, they're all false open. Tons of lock in all so, over the place. So but but you've, been, you've been a student of this for a long time, right? And probably yeah. one of the things that you're seeing is that um, it's not about open versus closed. It's about ubiquity. Right? Microsoft was a closed evil empire back 10 years ago. Now it's like, oh, they're, they're the standard, right? It's like, oh, okay, they're harmless. Google was like open and now they're the evil empire, right? It just depends on the perception. And the issue really is ubiquity. Amazon's got ubiquity on its side. It is pushing through. And they're winning the developers. They're winning the developers. They got the ecosystem. They got ubiquity. They've got a cost structure. I mean, I don't know what else could go wrong. <laughs> <laughs> they could maybe they could get SLAs well, maybe, and once that happens, I don't know what is Amazon's blind spot. I mean, it's, SLAs, it's, I think lumpy, SLAs. lumpy, lumpy performance. SLAs. No one wants lumpy, right? They want so locked in. So you think in. Amazon's in in crunching the big data in who's November? Got a, who's got better public S, public cloud SLAs than Amazon? Well, I think about what he just said. Does anybody? Washington. No, but here's the that's again. a public Rit cloud statement, not an Amazon. Let's, well, let's I, crunch big data computation December fifteenth. You tell me what those <laughs> SLAs are. I want to know. Well, I think I think the easy move is I mean, just the disruptive move. Yeah, you better do that on premise. <laughs> I just, I just don't, I just don't think that people are, are forecasting Amazon the enterprise properly. And you just said about the, the Washington Post, that is a left field move. We can now look back and say, okay, that makes sense. Amazon can continue to commoditize and disrupt and be innovative, then shift and have some sort of on-prem play. Oh, then it's over, right? Yeah. Then, then gets the, so they surround the castle. But they really they don't have a great on-prem play, right? They have no on-prem, but they could. They could get one. They could. They, could. they wanted to, they but I don't think they want to. to. But I think with them, what they figured out was, let's go build some cool public service, get everyone else to subsidize our main offerings, right? It's basically ultimate shared service. Everyone's subsidizing Amazon's destruction of their business, right? So if you're Macy's, why the heck are you on Amazon, right? You know, if you're competing with them, why the heck are you on Amazon? You're basically digging your own grave. And paying them to do it—it's amazing. I mean, that's that's the brilliance of this business. And Netflix model. goes and they, they brag about it. Yeah, <laughs> it's like Netflix are <laughs> digging your own grave. Like it's, yeah. it's beautiful. But, but the compute power is great. Okay, great. But you're subsidizing Amazon's you know compute power. So Ray, great job. Great, great to have you here. Um, congratulations on your event, Constellation Research. Uh, awesome. Successful yeah. event you just had last month. But top folks in. You're doing a great job with your company. Um, end the end the day out today. In the last word, tell the folks uh, uh, what's happening with IBM. What do you expect to hear from them tomorrow? I know you're not going to be here another thing you got to fly to, but what is IBM? What's the trajectory coming out of this show for IBM? What's your analysis? I think the executives have figured out that the important audience here is really the line of business leaders and to figure out how to do a couple things. One, democratize decision making. The second thing, figure out how they can actually make it easy to consume IBM at different entry points. And I think the third thing is really, how can we focus on improving data visualization graphics? I think you'll see something about that. Ray Wang on the Cube, Cube alumni, tech athlete, uh, entrepreneur, uh, new, his new firm, not new anymore, it's a couple of years under his belt, doing a great job. Uh, three analyst, years old? Three years old. Congratulations. We'll be back day two tomorrow. Stay with us. Here, exclusive coverage of IBM Information. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. This is the Cube. We'll see you tomorrow.